Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another War of the Visions video. And today we are going to do a full guide for Joom the Spring Celestial. I have to look at that name when I say it because it's a little bit of a mouthful and I'll probably just end up calling her New Joom a lot of times today. Anyway, we're going to look at vision cards you want to run her with, groups, how to set up team comps with her. We're going to build a team together live and then throw it into a fight and see how it goes. From everything I've heard so far, she is performing very well. I know she has slapped me down in Guild Wars a couple times, and when I've seen her in Arena, I have steered the other way. She's really good. Let's talk about her. First of all, here's her stats fully reincarnated. Boom, look at that. That's no trust stone buffs or anything like that, just a fully reincarnated base stats character. I'm covering up a little bit of that like accuracy here. Let me get out of your way for a second. There you go. That's what that looks like. Anyway, she's a stat stick. This girl is full of stats, and so that's definitely something that helps her out. She also brings a really good group buff to the table. I'm going to throw that on the screen for a second. Uh, full Bloom Prayer. This is her group buff. And when you're thinking about who to run her with, I think you start by looking here when you're building your team. She gives magic damage taken down shield to her allies, and she gives single target resist 25 to her allies, and she gives them the ability to dispel ignore fatal damage. This buff also does a bunch of stuff for her, but when we're looking at like who synergizes well with group buffs and stuff, I'm going to focus on this single target resist, this magic damage down, and then the ignore courage. This is a great starting place for team building because you go, okay, I want to run her with maybe some like great sword units or some water units. Who has buffs that synergize really well with her? Well, let's talk about A2 for a second. Uh, the previously known as best great sword unit in the game, and maybe still is. I don't know if Joom has taken that spot from her, but A2 brings a great group buff that synergizes synergizes very nicely with Joom. First of all, it's an agility buff. Joom does not give an agility buff to her group, so you let uh, A2 take care of that. That's awesome. This buff also gives A2 re-raise. Joom gives herself courage and gives everybody else the ability to remove courage removal or block courage removal. A2 bringing re-raise forces your enemy teams to have to deal with both courage and re-raise, which is just something that's harder for them to do. And the more ways you are covering yourself, the better off you're going to be. A2 also has a physical damage barrier she can cast on herself, making her good against physical units. And honestly, A2 is good against everybody, but she's particularly good against physical, just like how I feel Joom is going to be particularly good against everybody, but maybe even more particularly Really good against magic. So you're kind of covering each other's weaknesses right here, and both of these units should do a ton of damage. So I think A2, besides being in the same weapon type, is the premium unit you're going to look to run Joom with, or at least that's how I'm kind of thinking about it. If you're looking for a great sword unit with an AoE group buff, you have Esther. She does bring one. It's a little dated, but it does give her a physical damage shield, again, helping you with that, um, you know, physical damage mitigation side of your team and 15 AoE resist to your allies. So that's nice if you're looking for an AoE resist buff. My favorite place to look is right here. Let me just show you. I had it on the buff. Let me show you this beautiful picture of Shalze. Now, I think you're going to see a lot of Shalze Joom teams. She doesn't synergize the best in terms of like vision cards and obviously fire element is not water, but she brings this buff right here, right of safe passage, 20 AOE agility for four turns for your allies, critical evade, light resist, dark resist. Like how great is that? Plus giving protect to the team, Joom is giving herself that magic damage barrier. Protect will help her against physical, kind of covering, I'm not gonna say one of her weaknesses, but kind of giving her another strength and it gives them back some AP and everybody needs AP. I think this buff by itself, right of safe passage, is just crazy. And then also Shalze gives courage to another person on your team and herself. So I think this would be good, but you don't want, the thing you gotta worry about here is you don't want Shalza casting this on um, Joom because Joom's gonna give it to herself. If we look at this right here, you can see she she gives 200% chance to ignore fatal damage for self only. So if you can have Shalza come in and cast her limit break on herself and the other person in your group, again, somebody like A2, hey, 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 now what are we looking at? We are looking at a team 
game where everybody has courage and like a2 is also where rock and re-raise that's a uh, that's pretty solid i love the shalza combo now asterisk the erudite this is a unit that i would say does not synergize super well because his yo really op group buff is agility and single target resist the agility is fine but the single target resist is not going to stack with Joom, so you might not run him with her unless you just have you know one of them kind of just buffing themselves taking care of themselves whatever and if you were trying to build around water i think you would do sort of the same thing you would go to your water units look for those same buffs aoe resist agility maybe some like a slash attack resist penetration which is something by the way that old Joom can give you she can give you 20 slash attack resist pin to like her whole group with a buff it, it's 20 slash attack resist pin it's not the greatest but that is, if you wanted to run Joom and Joom that is somewhere you could look. Okay, next, I wanna talk about vision cards for a second. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at the great sword vision cards. You have no unit resist great sword vision cards. So that is a little bit of a weakness if you're looking for a great sword team. Instead, what you'll have to do is look for like Odin, that rainbow uh, unit resist card. But Odin's a solid card to run, especially if you're running like A2, she'll get a little accuracy from that as well. You do have three AOE resist cards and three agility cards. The ones I like the most are A2's card for your AOE resist because I'm going to be running A2 and uh, A2 likes her own card. This will give slash attack, pierce resist, AOE resist. It's just such a great card. And there's Joom, there's A2. Unfortunately, no Shalza on here if you're trying to run that, but you could mix in another great sword unit or this card is particularly good in a mono water team. If you're looking at Ferris, Summer, Glassy, Joom, I really like it there. Or maybe you're just a spy person and like to run, run winter ramada you're really a spicy person if you do that then for agility check out this one this one i don't love the uh magical man killer on here but you do get agility and shalza can take advantage of this card so you throw this on her for your agility if you're running her in like two great sword units which spoiler alert that's what I'm going to run. Anyhow, um, you throw this on Shalza. She can hold this with its magic stat. The magic human killer is a little bit wasted, but elemental chain resist is nice and agility is a must have. So those are the ones I like. There are some other options like this AOE resist crit magic percent one. You have crit attack or crit rate magic resist agility percentage. I do think this one is particularly good. If you wanted to run it on Joom, for example, it'll give you 18% agility and 20 crit rate and maybe that is one you work in on her honestly like it's pretty dang solid but i think i want my shalza to also get the agility so i'll look for the other one and then you could pick and choose from here one thing that i think is not great is you can see there's not a great overlap between her element water and other water great sword units you're basically stuck with Wint winter ramada who's definitely not near the top of the tier list and then most of these cards besides the a2 card don't hit a ton of excellent water units like i don't know about water veritas uh, amnelis is pretty good but nobody has water veritas built yet if we're being real like five or six people do um and so the the mono water teams if you're trying to double dip into the vision cards just aren't the strongest but if you are trying to run mono water there's plenty of great mono water vision cards out there that have your unit resist aoe resist and agility mixed with some other things that you can work in you know look to your dark espers things like that okay last up let's build a team before we go fight i want to set up a team and as i do it i'm going to kind of walk you through why i'm doing the team i'm doing and why i'm putting them where i am here we go, we're loading. I tell you, every loading screen when you're making a video is the longest ever. All right, here we go. Here's Joom A2 Shalza. This is the team I wanna build. Now, one thing I wanna point out, for Joom, when you're running Espers, I'm actually gonna take regular Odin off of her and I'm gonna switch it to Dark Odin. I want Joom and A2 to be pretty synced up with agility. Joom starting with 70, A2 starting with 68. Now, I am not running Joom's agility steroid. Instead, I'm running Trick Lancer Lore. You always run Jade Swordmaster. This gives you defense, defense piercing rate, slash piercing rate, AoE resist. It's a stack. You, you run that 100% of the time. Then, I'm choosing Trick Lancer Lore to get critical hit rate, defense piercing rate. If I wanted her to go faster, 
I could run Dance of the Celestial. But for now, I want her and A2 to be pretty synced up so they're comboing with each other, and I want both of them to be faster than Shalza. Luckily, Shalza coming in at only 65 is naturally slower than the other two, so that works out nicely. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to give Joom Dark Bahamut, or Dark Odin, excuse me, that's Man Eater slash attack up. Same story here with A2, Man Eater slash attack up. I'm going to use the two Odins for them. And then for Shalza, I'm going to give her something with a little speed to it, right? So something that like scales off of magic, like a dark Ramu, something along those lines. Um, this isn't a Shalza guide. I actually just finished my Shalza today. So we'll see how this works out. Anyway, let's check our agility numbers. 88 there. We're at 85 there. That's good. And we're 88 here. Perfect. So these two are synced and they're both a little bit faster than her. Okay. Now vision cards. Here we go. I'm going to give a two her vision card. Let's turn the filter to, oh man, I do love my night teams. You guys, you know, I love my night teams, but we're looking for, bum, 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 bum. of course I won't find it because we're making a video soldier. There we go. So here's the soldier cards. I'm going to give A2 hers. So there's my AOE resist 20. Then for single target resist, I'm going to have to look at Odin here. So I will clear the filter. I'm actually going to go limited party ability ice because I know that's what Odin has uh, right here. So there's my unit resist 20. This does give man eater 10. So it's not a terrible option to throw on Joom. Um, you get the attack, the magic. Let's do that. Now does A2's card have agility on it? I don't remember. I didn't look when I put it on there. It does have three. So that puts A2 at 91 agility and Joom at 88. That's something I need to consider. I might swap their espers if that doesn't kind of balance out towards the end, but we'll see. And then for Shalza, I'm going to put the filter for great sword units back on. And then what I'm going to do is hit confirm and whoop, I'm filtering two things. Get ice off of there. Great sword ice. Imagine when those kind of vision cards start coming out. And so do I have souls vision card built? I do not. I do not have Zenith beneath the stars done. I'm going to do that real quick. All right. Now, luckily, I was sitting on the shards that I needed to go ahead and boost that thing all the way up. So there we go. Even Elder Awakened it for fun. And now we've got our agility steroid. So let's check out where we're at. 100 agility on A2. For Shalza, we're at 94. That's pretty good. And for Joom, we're at 97. Okay. Now let's do our sub VCs. What we're looking for now is just like the best sub vision cards we have. So for Joom, let's look for, hmm, how about we look for that agility crit rate magic resist card from earlier. So there's 9% more agility, critical hit rate 10, magic attack resist. That's nice for her. Plus you're getting attack and a little bit more defense penetration rate. She doesn't really need that much more, but it is still nice with the attack on there. I like that one a lot. For A2, we could look for another agility card from the Great Sword group, or we could look for just some card that boosts our damage. Something like, um, you know, what's our, what's the guy called right here? A Vor, or, uh, good luck saying this one, Voldis Psych. So this is slash attack, reaction block rate, which is really important, and crit damage. So I really like that one a lot. Now, once again, that's an agility card. We're gonna deal with that here in a minute. And then for Shalza, let's get a rainbow agility buff card. So we're going to take the soldier buff off. I'm going to look for Black Rose Helena's card. So we're going to put the dark stat on there and then we're going to grab this one for a little agility buff for the group, 8%. And now let's switch Odin and Dark Odin to get our agility sync. So boom, boom. I wish it just did the switch for you. It does not. And let's see how close we are. So Joom is at 105. A2 is at 104. And Shalza should just be a little bit slower than them at 98. Perfect. Now let's do some gear and I'll kind of speed through this. I'm going to go nascent great sword for June. That's great for her. It gives her those stats that she wants. Then for your uh, armor, I think Brigandine plus six is just the way to go if you have it, right? Get that defense, get that HP, get more AOE resist, just slap that on there. And then I think you go for speed on her TMR. She has good enough buffs. I don't think you really need to try to run an agility TMR on her. So I'm going to look for something with like 10. I'm going to go illusory bells. That's just a solid bet right there. Then I'm going to go turn those off because I don't want her casting bells, at least not yet. Maybe I'll revisit that later. And then for A2, let's give her her gear real quick 
And there we go. Now, a little bit of memeing here on Chalza with the double pods, but that is single target resist, AOE resist, and a lot of agility with the shoes. So she is very much accessorized. And we can see she's at 115 agility with all of these little agility things stacking on her. Now, you don't get all of that stacking, but you do get a nice amount right there. She's at 115. She's bringing good unit resist, AOE resist. Those are both going to get buffed as we go into the fight. And let's check out Joom stats with this gear on. 30 unit resist, 42 AOE resist, 118 agility, 1755 attack, over 13k HP. She is ready to come do some dominating of some people. And then you see A2 stats, again, also looking really, really good. So let's look at buffs. Now, what are we going to turn on and off for Joom? With Joom, we obviously want her to make sure she's starting the match by casting Full Bloom Prayer. And then we want her self buffing with her HP recovery when she drops below 50 percent spring shower so i'm going to leave both of those on i'm leaving her limit break on and we're going to run now i have a i have a bit of a thing here i have a theory with viking sub i think with viking sub you turn this on you come in here and you turn off rebellious spirit you don't want her casting that you don't want her war crying launch you don't want her using that but full body blow is a defense debuff it's a defense and slash resist debuff Activation time now and an XL damage attack. She's going to have to get right in somebody's face to do that, but she might truck them. Like she might just crush somebody to death with that little attack right there. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for. We're going to see if that works for A2. We want A2 moving to the group and casting her group buff. So let's make sure survival field is on. Then we're going to have her cast her barrier deployment. Leave the rest of her moves on there for high dragoon. Make sure her buffs here are off but make sure her um, damage moves are on. So we get a little piercing damage coverage there. And then for Shalza, what we want Shalza doing is limit breaking and then doing her nice big group buff. That one right there. We can turn off um, paired blessing. Let's leave paired blessing on and just kind of see how that works out. I don't want her buffing her own defense and spirit. Uh, vivifying supplification is great. And then she's going to just run. I don't even know, honestly, with her at sub job, let's just run, um, Let's just run Cleric, and then we're going to turn off her, like, Elemental Resist buffs, because she's already getting that with her big group buff, but maybe she walks up here and, uh, you know, Curative Prayer somebody or something. We'll see. It doesn't matter. Give her that Light Element attack. Let's run this thing. All right, let's jump into a fight and see how we do. We're going into Arena. Here we go. Have I done my Arena fights today already? Am I going to have to use one of my potions to restore this we'll hit a strike team why not oh it's not a strike team it's a lightning team which in theory doom should not be great against but let's this is my, we'll see we'll see our first test is going to be it's lightning if we go out here and doom slaps a mono lightning team to death that's going to feel pretty nice. Okay, so how do I envision this working out and what might I need to do to change it? Again, depending on the map, and I just off the top of my head don't remember if I need to give people move or jump to make this map work better. I'm going to have A2 and Joom run to Shalza, group buff. Shalza's going to cast her limit break, then she's going to group buff, and then both of my carries, what I would like them to do is either buff each other, but I would really like them to drop their self buff on next. I'm running A2 in slot one and Joom in slot three. So Shalza will prioritize A2 with her limit break, giving them both the, um, giving them both courage. And then A2 can give herself re-raise. So that's kind of how I want that to work out there. That's why I put the units where I did in the turn order. And like always, a long ass loading time whenever we have a uh, video to record. Okay, yeah, now I remember how this works. So a2 starts really far away from the group. Let's see how the movement works out here. Joom did run in and buff. Then here's the limit break that I wanted to see. If A2 moves in and starts buffing the group next, that's not going to be a problem. That'll work out okay. And I think they might. We were faster than the enemy team, which I think is a good thing for us. We do want at least two turns of buffing before we engage. So I might have to adjust a few things to make that happen if it does not. Okay, A2 is going to barrier deploy. So she's in self-buffing mode. Spring shower comes out we miss 
A2's agility buff on our whole team, but A2 does get her own buffs online, and you can see she's tanking pretty well with those. Okay, enemies moving in towards us. A2's gonna get a chance to attack back. She took two big atta attacks before hitting um, Alaya right there, but we do have the healer on our team, which is nice. There's 4,500 damage with protect remove coming out from Joom onto a unit who she has elemental disadvantage against. Uh, there we go, the lightning team. Oh, preemptive counterattack, did it kill her? Oh my gosh, we almost did the thing that I wanted to see happen at least once. You have a preemptive counterattack with Joom and it, it's it's really going to be great if once or twice a fight you or once or twice a, a run through arena or something you can see her kill somebody with that before they unload on them and these lightning units are kind of destroying us our a2 got a little overextended and because we weren't able to pop elias courage before she was able to get in here and start messing us up we're in a little bit of trouble okay we get our courage buff popped right there and then we're gonna die i think yeah blitz is gonna kill us so our movement was not good enough that's what i'm gonna say here i think we needed a we wanted a2 and joom to go in there and start hitting people together instead a2 got a bit too extended and then um never came back to the team she goes out dies by herself joom's damage looked okay but by the time she got in there not the best so i'm gonna put that one on team building and movement but that was our first try with joom let's adjust a few things and try again i think maybe what's an adjustment i want to make here do i swap i can't swap their positioning i need a2 to be where she is and if i'm gonna run shalza in this group i think i need her to be in the middle as well so what can we do to help a2 kind of chill out i don't know that there's anything i honestly don't know let's see here what was a what does a2's buff rotation look like she should have had courage and re-race did they both get knocked off is that going to be a problem for us here so do 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 do, do re-raise on self she did survival field to start um and then she did barrier deployment so she she had courage and re-raise and they both just got knocked off which is a little bit unfortunate for us we'll just have to hope that doesn't happen again and i'll tell you what we're not going to fight another lightning team instead we're gonna fight an ice team with the new old doa this will be my first look at new old doa i don't even know exactly like what her moves do off the top of my head but let's find out okay here we go so once again a2 gonna do her group buff on just herself Joom's gonna run in and do what i wanted her to do by buffing up the shalza and then shalza's gonna limit break a2 i really do think this is a great opening combo of turns it's just a little bit too bad that this map does not allow the unit that starts on the left to get up there and group up with the team and buff everybody then oh my goodness the range on this enemy team's insane but because they don't one shot us and we have a bunch of of healers i think we're gonna be okay the rended men counter attack right there goes through that's big damage there's spring shower coming in so we get that heal on joom that'll proc here in a second alaya just auto attacking i think this team has kind of wrecked themselves by um having too much range like if they don't kill you in one swing it's over and then joom just did max damage to alaya with her cross attack right there although yeah i i don't this is this team comp that we just played against here i don't love it i see what they were trying to do but in my opinion if you're gonna run a tank do you really want your gunners like overextending that much and dying before the tank gets in there and then we're just gonna hammer this tank there's the magic and physical damage buff this could be huge damage right there yes 7800 on the tank one thing excuse me one thing june does not have is a follow-up attack so she a follow-up attack right there would have eliminated um the old doa but we just walk up and harvest her right there for ten thousand damage okay that obviously went a lot better i think the first time we were in an unfavorable matchup that time we were tanky enough that they couldn't just blow us up had they blown up a2 she did have courage and re-raise and they did not remove both of those things from her all right so that was an easy win we did a lot of damage i would like to fight what is this right here okay here's an ice team this is an a2 snow laswell ice team let's see how we do against this there's no elemental advantage or elemental disadvantage so i just want to see i really just want a good old-fashioned team fight to happen without some weird cheese not that we got cheese the first time around i just feel like it was kind of unlucky that we ran into who we did because a2 was kind of our answer to mono lightning and she because she got debuffed all the way and overextended it really hurt us i liked how in the first match 
Um, how our buffing ended up working out. We got the limit break onto A2. Then we got the group buff with the AOE resist in it and the dark and light resist. And maybe what we should be looking for is to fight dark and light teams and try to take advantage of that Shalza buff in full. But this is what team building and testing is in War of the Visions, right? You just come in here, you got to test stuff out. Now they're A2 doing the same thing our A2 is. Okay, that's fine. We don't have to worry about Joom extending into that because she is going to pull to the middle and stay in the back line. There's the limit break. I'm going to go ahead and skip the animation right here. So Courage and Re-Race on A2, Courage and Hate down on Shalza, Snow buffing, Laswell buffing, and then their A2 is going to pop bells. Okay, interesting right there. Our A2, once again, in range to do damage already. I don't love that. I might have to turn A2's uh, long range attack right there off because she just ends up kind of in no man's land by herself. There's a nice little reflex from her. I don't think Laswell kills her here no matter what. We'll go ahead and skip that animation. But taking no damage is nice. Their A2 is going to look to hit us. She goes for uh, Their A2 goes for our A2. That would have definitely propped popped her uh, courage or re-raise whichever one she would have had left here's our annihilation counter attack right here the limit break comes out big damage from a2 we know she could do that i want to see what june can do boom 11.2 thousand to, to their a2 that's a beat down that's what you like to see that's a lot of damage you guys that's a lot of damage spirit breaker comes out attack down curative prayer we have healing on this team which is nice rend and mend comes out okay we're still fine here comes rend and mend right back at you courage remove right there so snow goes down and then there's the mend we do have a nice bit of healing in this team with a2's uh group healing with Joom self healing and with shalza bringing some healing we really cover a lot of bases and that ended up being a pretty easy win again i think so far, the way our movement has, kind of A2's been the one who's shining. I'm going to turn off something. I, I, I want A2, almost just for selfish reasons, I want A2 to hang back a little bit more. So I'm going to look for like this TMR right here, Holy Knight Steeple, and then I'm going to turn it on. This will give her, this is going to lower her agility maybe too much. It low, Does it lower it below Shalza? I think it does. If she's at 114, okay, we're going to drop Shalza's agility a little bit here as well. I'm just doing this. So you guys know, I am just doing this. So A2 will hang back. I'm going to turn Fairy Guard on and then I'm going to have her run over. And I think she can run over and hit Shalza with that buff. This way, Joom will maybe get a little bit better of a chance to sign, shine. Okay, is this a lightning team again? Ooh, do we try it? Do we try it? Why not? Okay, this is another this is another mismatch. Like the only elemental thing happening here is their team has elemental advantage on one of our units. So if we can overcome that and win, especially if Joom can overcome that and look good doing it. I'm going to think that's a pretty big W right there. Again, the problem we had last time was A2 was running out there and dying. This time, with that TMR on, I think in theory, she should run over, buff Joom with the single target resist buff, then receive the courage buff, then hopefully maybe like run around the corner and provide her group buff to us and we can run in there and try and like death ball them. Um, taking advantage of some of our heals, taking advantage of some of A2's, you know, follow-up attack heals, and then Joom's uh, self-healing with the, with the courage. So let's see, let's find out. Okay, here we go. Now there's Joom group buffing because she's fa the fastest one on the team now. A2, nope, nope, it didn't work out. Okay, so yeah, the, the range height is too much. This map is brutal for that slot one. I do not like that at all. You're gonna have to give a long range TMR buff to get them to run up there like next to that little hill and do it. So we've slowed A2 down for almost no reason, but we'll see how that works out. Maybe their team won't extend so much that she's in Rend and May. Yeah, she is a destructive spiral. Okay, we'd have to turn off so many of her moves to get her to not start unloading on them that I don't love it. And we still get our damage up buff right there. Okay, courage. I pro you know what I need to do? What I'm realizing right here 
is I need to turn off that damage up buff from Shalza. And in, so, so she'll cast her um, AOE resist buff. So I'm not actually getting that off. Okay, Destructive Spiral comes out almost one shots the lightning. Spring Storm will come in here from Joom and Killer. So we're in a 2v2, but we have Elemental Disadvantage and our A2 is almost dead. Now she's really almost dead. Now she is ha having her courage pop. Okay, can we beat down their tank? There's a little two hitter right there. Joom's gonna come in decent damage across both of them with her self heal but this is troubling you got a liar up here doing a liar things boulder blockade we're living we get debuffed our self heal pops we have 46 ap with regenerate that preemptive counter attack is rough but okay nice damage and we healed back to full she has 30 oh god she's picking up crystals like what kind of troll nonsense is i'm gonna run and pick up a crystal in an arena fight i just think that's insane okay joom in the 2v1 with elemental disadvantage going for the tank while their while their dps's ai is running around self-healing and then dropping limit breaks on our back we're running around hitting a tank there's 9,000 damage that's rough the auto attack does not kill us but we're out of ap so we oh don't you dare don't you dare pick up that crystal don't you do it we're gonna skip this summon do we still have courage or did it get removed we still have courage okay now we go pick up the crystal go get the crystal run away no! Okay, really close to a 2v1 win right there. Um, we got AI'd to death for sure. And uh, maybe had we run the buffs correctly, that goes a little different. But now that I've noticed that Shalza's group buff is, she's doing the wrong one. She's doing the one I don't want. So let's adjust that. So supplicant, we need to turn off. Right of safe passage is what we want on. Um, we don't want, what's she casting? Wait, is she casting her, hold on, is it, it's not clear. Maybe I'm not seeing what I think I see because I'm looking through her buffs right here and this is definitely what I want her to cast is Rite of Safe Passage. I don't see, like what has she been casting instead of that? I'm just not sure. Is there a vision card ability that I'm missing here? I don't see a vision ability. So she's not, I don't know. Let's just, maybe I'm just misreading something as it happens live. This is literally my first time playing Shalza as well. This time, let's do our fifth arena fight. We could fight this, this light team or this wind team right here i think i'm gonna go ahead and remove i'm gonna put my agilities back to where i wanted them to be before so let's give the hairpin back to a2 and then turn that tmr buff off boom there we go then let's give shalza back her 10 tmr buff right here there we or her 10 agility tmr and then we're gonna run one more fight We've only so far lost to elemental disadvantage. Here, we have one elemental disadvantage unit and then two earth units. So let's hit this. This is another strike team. Let's see how we do against mono strike. Um, I really thought for a second that she was gonna 1v2 those lightning element units. And the fact that I believed that she was going to do it even just a little bit does make me feel like, hey, maybe she's like, really good that seems possible so i'm feeling good about her so far i just like her damage has been great her survivability has been great my team comp has been not good on this map or at least it's not doing what i want them to do on this map i could tune that a little bit more by finding a tmr that made uh that made a2 stay back i kind of tried that last time but i'm in the middle of recording a video and don't want to mess with it more now i would say from early uh early returns at right now to me, New Joom feels like she's probably on that A2 level. Don't run a mono water team into mono lightning and don't expect a water unit to destroy lightning units, especially some of the better lightning units in the game. But she does a ton of things and what she does, she does really well. She's gonna kill people. She's gonna do work for you. One thing to watch out for that I just realized, if you're fighting somebody like 2P who has that follow-up attack, courage, is terrible against follow-up attacks. So that is a little bit of a potential weakness for her. Um, we, you know, if if 2P pops your courage, that follow-up attack is gonna destroy you. What buff did, did she just cast? She, I swear to God, she just cast magic damage and physical damage up on my team. So I gotta go figure that out. Anyway, there's that follow-up attack I'm talking about. I want the AOE resist buff, not the magical and physical damage up buff. Okay, here we go. Their lightning unit is straight across from ours. Their scrapper slash, so we do kill the 2P pretty much straight away. 
Let's see what Shalza could do. Spring Storm, 5,500 damage with that Courage Remove. Shalza is going to look to heal. There's Curative Prayer. We'll see if that helps us live. Oh, we don't need to live through attack because we get the Rend and Mend off with the Courage Removal. So this is looking like a pretty easy W, actually. I just need to like rewind the video and figure out what the heck my shells is casting on this team. I don't really understand it. Anyway, when we weren't fighting mono lightning, we were dunking them. That's another just easy win. And there we go, guys. So that's, there's a, there's my first impressions of June. That's kind of what I would build a team around. That's kind of how I would set her up. Again, go from there and use what units you have to build around those thoughts. Early impressions for me, I think she's, up there with a2 she feels about that good if you invested in her i think you're going to be happy keep in mind mine was fully reincarnated so yours will have a little bit less stats like maybe that 2v1 that she tried earlier would have been a little less close had she not been reincarnated oh but it also you know had there not been a stupid crystal lying around for um what's her face to pick up maybe it's a little bit different um and that's the that's the video so thank you guys for watching i hope this was helpful for you i am uh well, I'm loving my first bit of Joom. I'm going to make this team work a little bit better before I throw it into like my Guild Wars teams, but that's going to be tomorrow. I'm going to work on this tonight. All right. Thank y'all. Have a great day and I'll catch you next time. Peace.